What is up? It's Tom. Thanks for clicking on this video. It is a new month. First of the month, first Monday of the month. So that means I am updating my Twins prospect rankings. Uh, as you can see here on the page, I've got my new top 10. This is probably, I mean, this is the most I've changed my prospect rankings in from one month to the other, or from one to the next. Maybe ever? I don't know. Um, and part of it is kind of naturally, this is the time... You know, and once June's done, you can kind of close the book on, or, or it gets difficult to still believe in in certain guys turning things around, or you just become completely convinced of guys who have continued to play well. One way or another, uh, just at this point in the season, it's kind of you kind of accept things as they are with, with guys who've you know been healthy and playing. Uh, but first, before we get into the actual list, I want to call out that um, since he's been a, an especially controversial name on my list this year, Austin Martin has technically graduated from prospect status. Um, the the technicality, I say, is because it's due to time on the active roster. Um, I think Austin Martin's been on the active roster, by my count, 63 days, which part of prospect rookie eligibility is that uh, 45 days. So... Um, he hasn't reached the at-bats threshold yet, which is the more common one people look at. He has reached playing time or active days, so I've taken Austin Martin off my list. I'm considering him as graduated, but as you see there, he was most recently my number six prospect. Also, the guys who are dropping off. So I have five new guys on the list this month, and it's a top 50. Brent Hedrick, Anthony Prado, Noah Cardenas, and Alex Isola have slid to off of my top 50. Uh, so let's just get right into that. Um, not as many, like, huge changes in the top 10 as you would probably expect, um, but some movement. Some there, Definitely some movement. Both Zebby Matthews and Andrew Morris enter the top 10. Um, Zebby in particular, I'll be completely honest. Not that I, like, doubted that he was good, but I definitely came into June doubting that he was this good. And, man, um, he, it's been amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm amazed that he's maintained the velocity that it has. I'm amazed that he can still live in the zone in double A as much as he has without getting hurt. Um, those are two big questions I had with him. Um, and he's just been remarkable. So, yeah, I moved him up all the way from 14th to 6th. That's a huge movement this high in my list. Um, David Festa also is moving up from 7 to 5. I'm just so much more comfortable with viewing him as a starting pitcher um, than I have been. Uh, this is a guy who really has struggled to throw strikes at sometimes. This is a guy who hasn't thrown a ton of innings. He's only eclipsed 100 innings once in his minor league career, and that was two seasons ago now. He only threw 90-some innings last year. He's been healthy. He's been throwing innings. He's been throwing strikes. Um, obviously, being in the majors is very exciting, uh, but this was this was kind of mostly built off of what he did in AAA last month. Uh, I'm just a lot more. Really, I didn't. I didn't think of him as I was kind of ranking him more of a, a, a primo reliever, but still more like a reliever in my eyes. Um, up until uh, kind of this month, so David. That's why David Festa has moved up. Um, Andrew Morris. I've talked about Andrew Morris a lot. I'm a pretty big believer in that guy. Um, yeah, I, I feel like you know if if Zebby Matthews is getting love and moving up lists, then Andrew Morris should be as well. Uh, Brandon Winokur has really shown a lot of improvement um, throughout the season. Unfortunately, he's on the seven-day injured list at the moment um, for the Mighty Muscles, but a guy who's playing some shortstop, some third base, some outfield, um, really has reduced his strikeouts as the year went on, especially impressive for a 19-year-old kid who you know hasn't faced a lot of the top competition. Um, so that is my top ten. You know, No movement in my top four. You know, it's a shame that um, Walker Jenkins has missed so much time, and then since he's been back, he hasn't been, you know, that like number one prospect type looking guy. Uh, his his numbers haven't been that eye opening at all. Um, but I'm kind of giving him the benefit of the doubt, and he's flashing some skills, getting on base, uh, not striking out a ton. Manny Rodriguez also injured, so that's a bummer. Brooks Lee though back from injury and looking amazing, uh, playing extremely well for the Saints. So that's good. Then Luke, Luke Kieschel kind of continues to maintain. He's not putting up as good of stats as he did in Cedar Rapids, which isn't a surprise moving into Double A. But as a 21 year old, or in his age 21 season, I should add, uh, playing 
in double A doing well. So that's kind of a good segue here. So that age that I have listed isn't necessarily their current age as of today. It's what age season they're in. And then another thing I should call out is anybody in their age 27 season or later, I don't consider for this list, even if they technically have prospect status, that would impact guys like Deshaun Kersey Jr. and Michael Hellman, who I would definitely have somewhere on this list had I not basically say they're not a prospect in my eyes due to their age. What's up, Editing Tom here. I should add the context for those who aren't as familiar with the channel. I'm not a pro scout. I don't play pro scout on here. Uh, but I do watch up all these players pretty much. Um, I also feel like I can kind of get excited about anybody, especially on a given day if they, they're playing very well. So this kind of holds me accountable for sort of nailing down, okay, who, who do I actually think these guys are? Where do I actually have them on the list? Cause it's easy to be like, oh, I love this guy. And then when you sit down and, and really break it down like this and you realize, oh, he's my 36th prospect in the system, it just adds that additional context. Back to the video. Anyway, moving on. So another thing I should explain, the yellow, it's gold I'm, I'm calling it, um, is anybody who has moved up three or more spots. The red is anybody who has moved down three or more spots. And you'll see green as well are the new guys. I think I've changed this color coding a couple times this year. I'm sorry. I can't land on colors that I like. And this just, just gets really messy. This gets really messy in a minute. But numbers 11 through 20, uh, Ricardo Olivar is moving up. And really, Gabriel Gonzalez, Danny DeAndrade, and Kalai Rosario, they are moving down, but it's not like I'm moving them down. It's more that Matthews, Morris, and Olivar have moved up. Those are three of the top performing minor leaguers in the system this year. Um, so those guys did move down three spots each, but it's not necessarily all because of anything they've done. Um, after that trio, Corey Lewis and CJ Culpepper slot in at 15, 16. Those are two names you're going to see probably, uh, a decent amount higher on some other lists. Um, and then some guys moving up. Yes. From Mercedes who's playing really well in the FCL. It was a big time international signing for the twins, uh, really lighting it up. I think he was like the twins player of the week. Uh, for this past week, Emir Severino, whose numbers are hard to believe from June. Uh, so he's really putting it back together. A guy who's kind of limited. You know, he's kind of a one, in a way, a one-tool guy with his power, but um, incredibly productive offensively in AAA right now after a very slow start. Rangdon Cohn, this was a little bit of a combination of, uh, I, I still like what I'm seeing out of him. He was a 20-year-old in Cedar Rapids playing a lot of shortstop. Uh, but he hasn't been as good as he was in Fort Myers. But there, there's a lot of guys um, that are kind of staying stagnant and are not moving down. Yes, Connor Prelip still exists. Segwaying to 21 through 30. Yes, Matt Cantorino still exists. <laughs> those, I have those guys back to back. Uh, Tanner Schobel, um, man, he's been it's been a disappointment. He he has really hit a wall in Double A. Um, yeah, moving on. Again, that color coding. Anybody in yellows, the guys are moving up. Gold. Uh, green is new, new. So, uh, Jair Camargo, Camargo, Eduardo Beltre, Demiuri Pena, and Daibar De Los Santos. Uh, those last three names got international signings, recent international signings. Uh, Beltre is really putting up some impressive numbers. Pena, you know, maybe the best contact hitter in the minors. Like, just pure boiling it down to not striking out, hitting for average. He does some other things, but... Um, physically not super impressive defensively. A lot of questions on where he's going to end up, but uh, super fun. We're going to have so much fun. I cannot wait till this guy gets to Fort Myers. Uh, it's going to be so much fun. De Los Santos is striking out a ton, uh, but there's a lot to like there. Um, you know, a lot of changes and things, you know, when, when a guy goes from not ranked to 28th on my list, um, that kind of tells you a lot about how I feel about the guys kind of from here on. Uh, but, uh, Adrian Bohor Okez, I've, I've been stumbling over that one. That's that's a new one, but I've I've heard of him before before this month. But I I got to see some video of him, um, a lot more physically impressive than I was imagining, and and uh, much bigger than I think what his lists <laughs> listed uh, dimensions are, um, and throwing ninety seven and putting up really good numbers in the FCL. Um, you know, a nineteen year old guy. Uh, so definitely a guy to get on your radar as, you know, someone who is entering the conversation among, you know, some of the better pitching prospects in the system. Uh, put him up there. And then Darren Bowen and Jalen Nowlin routing out that top 30. Um, kind of on the whole, I feel like the top 10 
is really strong right now. Um, obviously, when you have Jenkins, Emmanuel Rodriguez, and Brooks Lee at the top, that's a really solid top three. And then after that, you know, you've got Luke Kieschold, Zebby Matthews, and, and a lot of guys of David Festa and Andrew Morris and a lot of guys that are having really good years. Feels really solid. Kind of through 20, you know, it's it's feeling pretty good. This is where it kind of really starts to feel soft compared to some other years to me, but I think that's okay. The system I don't think is quite as deep as it was maybe at this time last year, but I do think the top end is better than it's been. Um, I would take that trade. But that's just sort of my long-winded way of saying things kind of tail off from here. Uh, a lot of these guys are guys I've really liked in the past but are not playing very well. Some of these guys are in red. Even even like uh, Ty Langenberg and Aaron Sabato, the two guys moving up in this range, I'm not. It's not that I'm like crazy about the how either of those guys are playing necessarily. Um, it's just kind of the way things have gone with a lot of the guys that I've had in this range, and then kind of continuing that same conversation through 41 through 50. Here we have some more new names entering the list. Spencer Bengard has pitched extremely well uh, for the Mighty Muscles, a late round draft pick from this recent draft. Travis Adams. Who I have had on my list before, um, and Jake Rucker, who I haven't. I just do Jake Rucker. Give this guy some love. Uh, he's he's a really well-rounded baseball player. Um, not the type of guy with a skill set that's really going to jump out on lists. You kind of have to get to a 50 range to even have him entertained. Uh, but Travis Adams, I should call out too on the on the previous page. Jose Olivares, another guy entering the list, is pitching really well for Fort Myers. That's another guy I've had on a list previously not this year i think he popped up around the 50 range it's not like i was high on him or anything Um, but he's been on a list before and now that he's pitching extremely well putting up really good numbers for fort myers uh and and that combination of a lot of guys being disappointing uh, he jumps all the way to 34 Uh, anyway back to that 41 through 50 range Uh, if you have questions let me know other than that kind of the uh the content is the list so uh, if you have any questions or if you have, especially, I always love it. If you've got a guy that you think I'm low on, uh, those are my favorites. Uh, if you got a guy you think I'm low on, let me know why. Uh, I'd love to hear about it. Thank you so much for checking this one out. Uh, we'll talk again soon.